gentlemen. One hundred! Call. I fold. I'll see you one hundred dollars. It raised you two hundred more. I think you're bluffing. In fact, I'm sure of it. You're two hundred plus two hundred more. I fold. Pussy. Looks like it's just the two of us, Mr. Spencer. That's Mr. Spencer to you. Am um, I did say, Mr. Spencer? Percy's fine. We're all friends here. Except for the pussy. I can hear what you're saying. Fuck off. I'm trying to think right. Okay, I'll see your 200 and raise you 500 more. Still think I'm bluffing? Yes. Well, it's gonna cost you another 500 to find out. That's a lot, that fault. Long live the Pertinator. Whose fucking deal is it? I'm tapped. I'm gonna call it a night. What's the matter, sissy? You's afraid of breaking your mommy's curfew? <laughs> You're an asshole, Percy Spencer, and the only reason I don't bait some sense into you is because this is Sam's game, and he's a friend of mine, but you better hope I never run into you outside of this room. Thanks for all the money, shithead. Uh, good night, Thornton. Hey, what about the Shangi? I'll see you next time. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. The one time in my life I get ahead and all you stupid good-for-nothing assholes piss off on me. I'm afraid the Lady Locke, she made the decision for us. Eh? Oh, look at the bright side, Percy. That's Mr. Spencer. Uh, uh, Mr. Spencer, you get to leave a winner. Eh? The operative phrase, uh, you get to leave. Eh? I can't believe you was going to put the out too, Sam. Come on, one more game. Come on, you must have something left to bet. Don't do it, Sam. Look at this guy, uh, fat, stupid, drunk. He's been running on nothing but luck, and you and I both know that luck never beats the brains in the long run. <laughs> if I didn't know better, I'd think you were talking about me. I own a bar, Mr. Spencer. It's a little out of the way place, but it's worth something. I'm listening. One game, winner take all. I put up the bar, you put up all the money you want tonight, and one of us goes home a very happy man. Deal. tell you it with your own fucking house? Now that Kevin thought about it, it kind of did make sense that it was his own house he was robbing. Since as near as he could figure, no one else in town would have had so many pictures of himself hanging around. I mean, Jesus H, even if it wasn't your fucking place, all that shit you stole is useless. Faith it, Kevin, you poor and your family don't know nothing worth stealing. Now I know the truth can sometimes hurt, but let's face it, you and me got to make a fucking decision. Kevin told Alan he was right, and that he understood, and that maybe it was time to just go ahead and destroy the universe with his god machine. Fourteen hair dryers and a vibrator glued to an air conditioner ain't a fucking god machine, boy. I'm talking about you and me getting out of this place, making our own way in the world. Kevin wasn't sure leaving home for good was such a good idea. Even though he pretty much hated his parents with an all-consuming blind rage, they usually had smokes and canned meat. And Kevin was pretty sure that given his limited skill set, that's about as good as life was ever going to get for him. Skill set? Fucking world full of rich people who don't know jack shit about nothing. Oh yeah, Millie Vanilli had a big skill set. The cast of Baywatch, chock full of fucking talent. Stephen Hawking? Kevin told the bird that as far as he knew, Stephen Hawking was a fairly bright guy. Big bang, my third feather is fucking off. No one called him on it because he was in a fucking wheelchair. That's it. Kevin thought, what? All you've got to do is get a disguise and fake being handicapped. I mean, even if people are pretty sure you're full of shit, ain't no one going to call you out just in case they're wrong. Nobody wants to risk being the person who makes fun of a cripple guy. I'm a fucking genius. Kevin thought about it 
and as near as he could figure, it was the very best plan his imaginary friend had ever had. Well, you've got all your stuff packed already, so let you and me go find us a disguise in a wheelchair. You still got that thing? Man, I'm telling you, you'd better go see a real fucking doctor. That homeless guy you be going to don't know shit. When you gonna learn to drink like a man, fucking loser kid? Fuck it, like my whole family can't drink no more. Whatever will the neighbor think of us now? <laughs> That's right, I don't care. <laughs> Fatty, get up. Hey, Annie. Big blouse, come on, fuck. Hey, 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 stretch pants. Jesus, I gotta do everything around here. How's the fuck, Captain Cox speaking? <laughs> what? So? So? Yeah, 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 I'll be right over. Son of a bitch. Who would have thought owning a bar would be such a pain in the ass? What bar? You own a bar? Is it open? If you was going down there, I's coming with you. Come on, come on, let's go! Fine, but let's sneak out the back. Broken heads passed out in the lawn again. I don't want the fucking leaf tagging along and mooching off us. But Boise, he's our son! <laughs> you's on the toe? What's the address here? What this? A seven. Fuck, it's all so confusing. We can do this, Boise. Concentrate. Are you Percy Spencer? Who the fuck wants to know? I'm the one that called you. Uh, your bar's over here. Oh, now I get it. So we responded to the alarm and we're here within four minutes. Our guide caught a glimpse of the perp trying to get away, gave chase, and managed to recover all the stolen items. They called me and I got down here right away to make sure no one tried to loot the place or do any other damage until the place was secure again. I called Sam ASAP and he told me you were the new owner. So, so you'd like run a fucking alarm company or something? That's right. The best in town. That costs money, right? Yes, a little, but when... You're fired. Fuck off. It really is more prudent to make sure the company is protected when you can't be here. Yeah, well, just between you and me, I'm going to be here every waking moment for the rest of my fucking life. Not to mention Big Ass here, and I pity anyone crazy enough to get between her and the booze. What's the matter, stupid? Are you deaf? Get out! You're going to regret this. You can't regret what you don't understand. Good one, Boise. I know. Jeez, I can't believe we own our own bar. It's the second greatest day of my life. Jeez, Boise, what's the voice? I'm saving that one for the day you get the fuck out of my life. <laughs> Any chance of that went right out the fucking window when you got this place. And he ain't going nowheres. Oh, well, let's get drunk. <laughs> Like to take forever in there, don't it? Ooh, that's right. I'm just a figment of Kevin's imagination. I sometimes forget. Jesus H, you're the ugliest son of a bitch. Anyone ever tell you that? Mmm, that's a nice pet you got there. You dumb pussy whip pile of shit. Hey, check this out, Quasimodo. That's my ass. Look it, look it, look it. Now I drive you like a mule! Look at me, Kevin! I'm on top of an ad! <laughs> Fucking normals! I hate all of them! Ain't you in your disguise yet, boy? Kevin told Alan that he'd narrowed it down to two choices, but that he was having a hard time deciding which one to pick. Lord Thunder!
wondering. I got to do everything around here, and I ain't even real. Uh, let me see him then, boy. Apologize to the bird and told him that to make it up to him, he was going to take him drinking and get him Percy drunk. Ooh, Percy, Percy drunk? Man, that's the best kind of drunk. All right, let's get that wheelchair and have at it with the fucking alcohol. I'm beginning to think you ain't never gonna learn, broken head. What the hell's going on, Spencer? I won the bar in a poker game. Pretty fucking cool, eh? What's with the broads and stuff? But me and Sam had an understanding. I had the peelers and low lives, and he had the lunch crowd, and anyone middle class or higher. Middle class people suck dick. I want drunk and peelers. My kind of people, you know? After all I've done for you, you think I'm gonna stand by and let you fuck me over? <laughs> Come on my property again until you're ready to discuss things like a fucking adult. Oh, you want a war, Spencer? You got it. Good for nothing. <laughs> Fat, drunk bastard thinks he can. No! <laughs> I know you're the new owner, sir, but, well, Sam usually pitched in and helped out during the lunch rush. Am I Sam? <laughs> uh, no. Then get the fuck out of my face and get back to work. I'm trying to keep up, but just the drinks alone. Not to mention the kitchen hasn't sent out any of my food orders yet. Oh, oh, I, I forgot to tell you, you gotta cook all the food, too. I fired that prick! <laughs> I can't cook, serve tables, and mix all the drinks by myself! You guys are going to have to work too! <laughs> Us working, that's a good one. Use a real fucking pistol, Mark! I wasn't kidding! Oh, Mr. Talkback thinks he's cool. Fuck off, you're fired! Fuck off! Hey, watch this, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> right in the fucking stones. You see that? Classic. Hey, where y'all fucking going? Fine, go find someplace else. We don't need you as customers anyway. Now what are we gonna do? Get hammered and forget who we married? Yeah, I know that. But if we don't get some customers, we's gonna go bankrupt. So? Use your head, Poissy! We's got us a fucking bar! Now I don't care if we ever get rich, but if we's can find a way to just keep paying the bills, then we ain't never gonna have to pay for another drink again, as long as we live! The more Percy thought about it, the more he realized that his wife was right. But that's not the kind of thing he'd ever admit, so he called her a fat shit can instead. I'm gonna have a dump. Find a way to make this work by the time I get back, or else. That left Percy with only three hours to solve the problem. I 
got something, baby Something you want I got something, baby Something you need Oh, my God, something Something you need didn't much like the idea of being the only person drinking in a bar, since it severely limited his options of stiffing someone else with the tab. Not to mention he'd have no one to mooch smokes off of, so he told Marty to go screw himself and wheeled out. Your daddy's got himself a drinking bar, boy! Maybe leaving home wasn't such a good idea after all. Come on, use family and use crippled. He's got to give you free liquor. Hey, easy there, friend. Marty's going to help you. First, I'll take you to the hospital. Then to my lawyers. <gasps> Where'd all them people come from, Boise? Maybe you forgot, but you married a fucking genius. Who the fuck's gonna save him? You's crazy if you thinks I'm doing jack shit. That's the beauty of my plan, Big Pants. I sell the booze for cheaper, but you gotta serve yourself. <laughs> that way, all I gotta do is sit here and drink and make sure everyone pays their cash. Holy Christ, Boise, it's perfect. There's absolutely nothing that could ever go wrong with this plan. Not in a million years. Nothing. It's foolproof. <laughs> Dumbin, what the fuck for? Er, er, fatty, read that. You was getting fined by the city for not having no wheelchair access to the fucking bar. Fucking gimpy hop along crooked walk and stumble fuck. Them people's always out to get me. Who filed this fucking complaint? Oh, this is just fucking beautiful. It's the boy. Screw it, I'll fight him in court. All I gotta do is prove he ain't crippled. How you gonna do that? I figure when I start wailing on that little prick, he's gonna have no choice but to get up and run. Mm, beating up your own son in a court of law. That might just work. Order! Order! Get up, boy! Come on, get up! Mr. Spencer, either you display proper conduct in my courtroom or I will have you removed. But he's faking it. How the fuck can he say I discriminate against him because he's crippled if he ain't crippled? Your Honor, I'd like to call my next witness Dr. William Owen. Uh, this is the spine of a normal child, Kevin Spencer's age, and uh, this is Kevin's spine. So, in your opinion, my client meets all the criteria for being legally considered handicapped. Well, Kevin hasn't eaten any fruit or vegetables in over five years, and sadly, when he first came to see me, he had no idea what milk was. So Kevin Spencer has no choice but to be confined to a wheelchair. Well, actually, with a proper diet and some nutritional supplements, there's no reason he can't regain 100% of his previous mobility. I suggested that to him, but he told me to go fuck myself with a shovel. And did you? Uh, no, I did not. Well, I've heard enough. Mr. Spencer, the law is clear, and it is simple. 
Public buildings must provide proper access to all members of the community. The court will grant 30 days for compliance. If you fail to comply, the court will fine you the sum of $2,000 a day for each day you are in breach of this ruling. Well, ain't no way that ramp's getting put in in time. What's gonna cost me $300? Fuck that. But we was clearing more than that a day in profit. Even after what you and me was drinking. That ain't the point. I promised my father on his deathbed that no matter what happened to me in life, I'd never help out no one who was physically disabled. Never. Your father ain't dead. Oh yeah, I must have seen it in a movie once or dreamt about it. Screw it. You ready? Fire away. Hello, insurance money. You filled out them fucking forms, right? Got them right here. What do you mean you got them right here? You were supposed to drop them off at the insurance company! I figured I'd just kill two birds with one stone and drop them off when we go down to collect our money. That way we don't have to pay for a cab fare twice. I would save enough money. Wait, cocksucker! Middle-class people suck dick. I want drunks and peelers. My kind of people, you know? You'd better not cross his path.